Recently, I published an audio book, expertly narrated by Norma Jean Gradsky, called Analytic Truth Versus Formal Truth. In today's podcast, I'd like to tell you just a little bit about that book, and then I would like to interview the narrator, the very, very talented and, in my view, somewhat undervalued narrator, Norma Jean Gradsky. So let me start by 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 discussing the contents just a little bit. First of all, in this book, it is made clear what analytic truth is and how it differs from formal truth. Some important theorems are stated, both comprehensively and accurately. I should point out that the theorems in question concern what is called incompleteness. Incompleteness is a property of sets of statements, okay? And it is a term often used by logicians. A complete statement set is one that can be defined recursively, and I'll tell you what that means in a second. An incomplete statement set is one that cannot be defined recursively. A recursive definition is one that has the, the following form. X belongs to class K whenever alpha belongs to K, beta belongs to K, where for some relation R, alpha bears R with respect to beta. So let me give you an example of what that means. Okay, let's suppose we want to define the term natural number. Well, first point is that zero is a natural number. That's the first point. The next point is that if x is an arbitrary number, natural number, and x plus one equals y, then y is a natural number, okay? So there we've given a recursive definition of the term natural number. And a formal truth is one that belongs to a recursively defined statement set. And a syntactic truth, I'm sorry, a, a, an analytic truth is one that holds in virtue of entirely of its meaning. So for example, an example of, a, of an analytic truth would be, would be, let's see, what would an example be? There are infinitely, infinitely, infinitely many prime numbers. That's an example of one. Or uh, there cannot possibly be law unless there is some form of government. Or uh, a creature cannot be literate unless it is sentient. Or uh, uh, let's see, what would another one? Uh, there are not all continuous functions can be differentiated at any given point. You know, that's another one. So analytic truths are sometimes obvious, but they don't have to be obvious. In fact, it can be proved formally that, uh, or at least mathematically, that, that there is no limit to how non-obvious they can be. Now, um, a lot of you have probably heard of Gödel's incompleteness theorem, and Gödel's theorem is misunderstood. Um, Gödel proved that there is no recursive definition of the class of arithmetic truths. Okay, so truths of arithmetic. A truth of arithmetic is one that concerns such interrelations among whole numbers as can be expressed in terms of the concepts less, less than, addition, multiplication, for some, for all, negation, conjunction, and disjunction. Okay, I realize I'm moving a little bit fast here. Now, what Gödel proved is that the class of arithmetical truths is not analytic, and he therefore proved, and in, he proved that by showing that there is no recursive definition of this class of arithmetic truths, and in so doing, he was also thereby proving that there is no recursive definition of the class of such truths. So what Gödel proved is precisely that there, that there is no recursive definition of the class of analytic truths, even though any given class of formal truths can, for that very reason, be recursively defined. All right, so it's a somewhat technical book, but in the book itself, it is stated, you know, uh, pretty clearly and comprehensibly. Norma, um, you narrated the book, and you know, judging by your performance, I mean, you seem to understand every word. But did you understand everything that I just said right now? No. You did not. Okay. So that, <laughs> and I think that sort of illustrates a paradox. Like, so is that because actors kind of, like, when you play a part as an actress, you you know more than, than, or like your 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 part knows more than you do, or something like that. Like, how does that work? Because you seem to understand it when you're um, putting it. And I appreciate that. And I try to un understand it. Um, I've said this to you before, it's not my discipline, mathematics nor philosophy, Right. Um, but um, it, I did have some understanding, enough understanding, um, but you asked me if I understood what you just said, and it went really fast for It me. did go a little fast. Right. No, but, um, the, but no, I um, the way that you wrote it and the way the examples in the book and and the setup of the book where it was professor to student and the student coming across upon the understanding um, helped me understand it as well. So I won't say that it was all acting. Um, that's right. That's right. I, I enjoyed the character Max and your student in, in the book, in the dialogue. And um, I, I really felt that I was coming to an understanding along with the character. I did. 
Well, because what happens yeah. with me is when I'm when I'm writing, okay, when I'm talking, that's one thing. But when I'm writing, I kind of enter into a special space, and um, and when that happens, it, I mean, I, I really kind of shift gears. So even if I have enormous difficulty just articulating an idea in speech, uh, it's not hard for me to do it when I'm sort of actually in my writing mode, um, and because um, I, I really just shift into a different gear. And, uh, I, I see that too. I see that from listening to your explanation, and I think that you know it's pointed to people that have the background to understand it, and it's understandable. Uh, but no, that's the great thing about your books is the um, that you do make it understandable with your examples and uh, some repetition. Uh, examples, especially, and I really liked the dialogue. You know, just the student asking you questions and and uh, a deeper explanation and uh, it worked it worked so, it, so for me as you know a lay person and actor I, I'm intelligent and have um, but right. no, but no background in in your discipline and uh, mathematics so it, it I was able to understand it as I narrated it it was important to understand it so I sounded like I did Right, and you did understand it. You certainly did understand it. Um, yeah, actually, dialogue form. I mean, you know, I haven't really written too much fiction. I tend not to, but I really like writing dialogue, and you know, and it, it does and it works, right? Because um, when yeah. I'm writing dialogue, it, they are dialogues, right? They're not they're not like me attempting to wrench ideas in dialogue form. They are just dialogues. But yes. it's an underused. It seems to me it's a really underused form. I mean, Plato wrote them. I mean, his dialogues were not all that dialogue-ish that were more kind of monologues but 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 it's a very underused form and that always kind of struck me like why aren't these uh okay so yeah obviously playwrights use it but it seems to be but it seems to be enormously powerful for sort of pedagogical purposes and yet i cannot remember the last time some professor you know wrote a dialogue to illustrate a point um i agree with you i agree with you totally and uh um no it really is helpful to because in your format of the dialogue, you know, the questions and uh, the explanations really help clarify things. It, it, it's real life. Um, the dialogue yeah, right. it's real life. It's really helpful. I thought it was a very clever uh, device. And you're right, it works well for pedagogy. For pedagogical purposes, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think, actually, your answer uh, kind of gave me a, I think, kind of tipped me off at to why it is more people don't write dialogues, which is that in order to write dialogues, it's sort of like, I think the people who can do that are kind of the same people who can do imitations. You have to be kind of playful and young at heart. <laughs> you know, yeah. you, have to, you have to be sort of, because you have to let yourself flow and it's sort of a little bit random, but not too random. It's not goofy, but you have to be a little bit kind of playful. And like these professors are, I mean, I, I, there was this professor of philosophy named John Perry, not a dumb guy by any means, but he, he tried to write a dialogue and it was so bad. I mean, because it was just, it was a non-dialogue that just consisted of cut and pasted, you know, snippets. It was just, it, no just, didn't, it just didn't work. Yeah. Um, but no flow and no, no authenticity. Not, nothing. Yeah. It was just, yeah, yeah it was just wretched. Um, cause it, yeah, it just doesn't work. And, um, but you do have to, yeah. Cause I, it's, it's sort of funny cause I, I sort of like, you know, I do imitations and just kind of do them naturally and it's amazing how few people do them. You know, and, and my, my girlfriend actually told me that it had to do with having a kind of childlike kind of mentality. Um, it's fun, huh? Yeah. Yeah. I think I'm going to be trying. I've heard, your, I've heard some of your imitations. Uh, imitations, and they are, they're just totally silly. <laughs> they're pretty silly. They're, they're well, pretty they're, silly and fun. I like right. that about you. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> And right. now I have to ask you a question. So as a, as a narrator, I mean, I know that, that you don't exactly self-categorize as an actress, but, you know, you are an actress. Um, yeah. And um, that's very clear. By the way, I should point out one thing. Um, as and I think, I don't know that you know this, Norma, which is that, so I've worked with a lot of, you know, uh, voiceover people, you know, these people who self-identify as professional voiceover people. And, okay, so, and, and they don't, like, they don't intonate, they don't do anything. They're just straight reading it. Right. And like, let's say there's a typo in what I'm saying, they'll just read through it. And then when I listen to the uh, the, you know, mm -hmm. the, the tracks, 
And I'm like, well, you know, why'd you read that? They're like three is's in, in a row. They're like, well, that's what you have the page, man. I mean, I'm, I'm serious. They get mad at me. They're like, well, that's what you wrote. I just read it. It's like, well, dude, you're supposed to be an audio professional. I mean, you know, the, the better ones, the better ones, but this is maybe one fifth of them. The better ones will say, look, uh, I'm not, I don't quite uh, understand this passage. Is there a typo here? Did you really mean to have is, 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 uh, or can I take, you know, they'll be discreet, but the other ones will just read it and then they'll become piffy. Um, I'm serious. Can you believe that? Um, yes, I think part of the dictum is that we are not to change the author's words. And, oh, you know, but, but common sense has to rule. And I bother you sometimes. I ask little, for permission little. before I edit something. And if I'm afraid, it will change the meaning. Because it's a subject matter I'm not totally familiar with. I remember one I did recently. Um, and it was, uh, I guess you were giving a proof or an example. And it was an Euclidean. Oh, I can't remember, but uh, the word oh, an based, or based, a based, based, was missing, and then I thought, well, maybe it's supposed to be missing, and so, you know, since it was a little a, I left it out. Oh, oh. I didn't want to bother you with it, but I thought maybe I you would have reviewed yeah. it. Oh, yeah, yeah. So you might, I think it's the most recent book I did for you, so you might find that and I can fix it later. Uh, well, no, but I'm yes, there, 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 I can tell by that I like your sound effects, though. That's the, your, that's the first your, your workflow, I can tell that you just get going. And so um, you're writing. I mean, you're so prolific. You must write really quickly. Yeah, so and, I don't, I don't uh, have time to proof it, right? Yeah, so I'm happy to, to do that as I go. Um, but some narrators don't want to take on that responsibility. A lot of the narrators on ACX, I, I'm going to try and bring this conversation back to things that I think will be of more general interest. But a, okay, so some of the people on ACX are real pros, okay? Yes. Uh, but most are kind of not. Um, you know, and uh, man, I mean, some of them are not good. I don't know. Okay, let me ask you. So as an actress, here's the thing I wanted to ask you. Um, so do you find, so let's say you have to play some part that's... Um, so, so let's suppose that you have to play some character who knows a lot of things that you don't know, who's a completely different person. Do you find that when you're playing that character, you actually did know all of those things? You just weren't able to kind of access them? Hmm. Well, that's an interesting question. Um, n not always, no. Um, uh, you know, I'm a great researcher. I, I, if I don't know something, I'll try to figure it out. I'll try to learn about it. Um, I. I do a lot of prep for any oh, okay. do so, but to uh, say no, not always. Okay, let me ask you a slightly different question. So, if a quest, if a character, um, let's let's suppose that there's some character who resembles you or seems to resemble you. Mm -hmm. Now, is it easier for you to play that kind of character than it is to play a character who bears no resemblance to you, or does the kind of assumption that of presumption of similarity actually make it harder? In other words, do you actually do a better job if you really have to kind of okay. not base it on yourself? Oh, that's another interesting question <laughs> about um, for narration. Yeah, well, um, either, I don't know, narration. Anything. For, for narration, um, because of the, the sheer length right. um, and the stamina needed, um, it is more helpful to narrate in the uh, a voice or a personage that's closer to yourself. Okay. Uh, as right. far as narration goes, because some of those books are 10 hours long and it's hard to maintain um, yeah, a, a long different time. character. Um, doing uh, quips and, and dialogues with different characters, it, you can manage, but it's just the sheer amount of hours and words spoken that it's really helpful to have a character. Uh, close to your own vocal range, age, etc. That's super helpful. Uh, for acting, um, stage acting, what I did mostly, no, I like characters that are different. I like to, I like to create a new character. Okay, all right, all right. And is, now, do actors have, is there some kind of personality type that is common to actors, or could anyone or is there no correlation? I mean, is, could anyone be an actor? Like, uh, in terms I've of taught students, acting students, 
Um, yes, there's a character type. It's oh, tell your, me, tell me, tell me. Your extrovert, your, um, well, extroverted. I, I'll just leave it at that. Okay. Um, I, I've had acting students that are not extroverts, and then sometimes I wonder what they're doing here, but maybe it's to push themselves um, to become comfortable. But um, Is that, that, is that really that, what you believe about them? The ones that are there. That or, do are, you, or do you just think they're just bad actors who want to think that they're good actors, and you're trying to put a shine on it? No. Uh, <laughs> so I've had kids. I, I've had students like that. I say kids because my most sure. experiences with high school students. And yes, there's bad actors. Um, and I used to believe, mm -hmm. even like taught acting, but I used to believe as a student, look, you just got to have it. And then you hone your craft and perfect it. Right. You don't have it, have the talent, and all of us have talent in different areas. I always encourage, but if you don't have it, I just figured you were lost. But um, I was, I've been proven wrong and have, uh, I've seen people, really? some into good actors. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and as being a good actor, is that sort of a cognitive thing? Is that, is that, is that about having a kind of intelligence or is it more an emotional thing, being kind of at ease with, you know, oneself in a certain way? Well, it's both, and um, interestingly enough, uh, sometimes being an extrovert, but some, you know, I'd say actors are are insecure, not really at ease with themselves. Oh, interesting, interesting. That's it. It is interesting. Um, uh, and um, I forgot the question. I'm sorry. That's okay. Let so, me let me ask a slightly more uh, pedestrian question, which is, um, okay, so you've done a lot of work for me, you know, really top top-notch work but now Thank you. what what is the kind well what is, what other sorts of work have you have you done um in as a voice, narrator as in a, voiceover yeah. world voiceover work yeah and not in stage or um um narration uh, i'm trying to think but all but one of my published audio books have been narration Kind of straight narration, right? Sorry, like well, yours aren't straight narration, yours have got some acting in it. Uh, some of them, um, all but one have been narration. Um, I'm dying to do characters in fiction, but I haven't landed those yet. Yeah, I'm, I'm really puzzled by that. And tell us, uh, so, so what would, um, so like Anna Karenina, I don't know if that particular one is up for audition, but what a wonderful so. book. Um, no, some I've noticed that Audible.com is reproducing some classics. Tom Sawyer just came out, and it's just awesomely narrated. Um, so, what other books I've been? No, these are mostly that I've come across are uh, I won't say new authors. They're they're contemporaries. They're contemporary works. Um, a lot of them, and what I'm kind of attracted to. Um, for fun, are like cozy mysteries, murder mysteries, etc. Uh, with um, some oh yeah, you'd be perfect for that. Oh yeah. god, yeah, no, like um, really Nora, well, well, Efron. What, what's that lady's name? Uh, she 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 wrote she wrote like A for Aardvark or that that series, oh. uh, Janet Ivanovich or something. Sue Grafton. Sue Grafton, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, you'd be perfect for that. Yeah, oh, I love yeah. her characters. Huh? <laughs> yeah, why aren't you? Uh, yeah, why aren't you doing that? You should, uh, wow, yeah, that is, uh, you would be perfect for that. God. Come, well, wow. Oh, yeah. That's see what exactly. comes up, I know. What a great character that is. I really, I, I read them all. I read them all. I devoured them. Um, I, yeah, I, I'm a serious reader. I'm well read, but I, sh I really enjoy the uh, escapism. Oh, well, have you thought about just reaching out? I mean, I mean, you know, maybe this um, each, reaching yeah, out to the authors I'm, directly. I'm sure, you know, that's a good thought. You always give me inspiration, Dr. K. Um, that I Why not? I mean, but, but I have to look. Perhaps I would assume Sue Grafton has them. You don't, you don't, you, I, don't, I don't think so. I think you're, I mean, maybe Sue Grafton does. Okay. But I mean, look, I mean, no, most, most authors, even very, very successful ones are barely getting by and, um, you know, and, you know, they're not dumb people and, uh, you know, and they will, uh, no, no, I, I think they would, you know, some will respond well, some will not, but I mean, uh, they're, you know, they're, they're authors. Uh, no, I think they would, they would, uh, 
I don't think seems like she would, huh, Sue Grafton? I, I don't know her specifically. I mean, again, like, she she probably has so much publicity, like, has all this marketing apparatus in place. But, uh, yeah, I think that... Uh, you would go through her publisher, I'm sure. Um, maybe. Yeah, well, I don't know. Maybe. Well, I'm not... You're right. I'm not uh, sure, so. but... I would assume. Interesting, interesting. But the, but well, the you to just go go like I don't know what the protocols are, but just you know a slightly more aggressive. Um, just be. I noticed in your introduction you said you know in your opinion undervalued, and that yeah. I don't. Um, uh, I'm I'm feeling my way because it's new to me. Not I'm well trained and well experienced as an actor and teacher. It's just a, a new medium for me. So I'm feeling my way, and you've given me lots of opportunity. And it's interesting that um, kind of um, landed uh, upon you and your work because uh, I'm um, a, a, I'm an academic as right. well, um, and so it's kind of an interesting um, choice. I guess I just I saw your title and I was instantly drawn to the first one to audition for it. So I'm auditioning for uh, cozy murder mystery stories um, with great, you know, leading lady characters. And um, then, you know, I see um, I, I see a priori knowledge and I gravitate right to that. Um, it's interesting. I guess, you know, I'm 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 two people in one. And that's good for all of us, you know, to have multifaceted characters and interests. Yeah, that is interesting. I mean, I, yeah, no, I, I, I definitely think you should do these. Um, actually, but I've had experiences like that with other people. Like, you know, um, I mean, the other people who narrate my stuff, they're not, for the most part, they're not um, people who narrate academic things. I mean, if you actually look at what they've narrated, it's like, you know, the, the life story of, it's like 200 confirmed kills, the life story of Jerry Smucker's Green Beret, you know, <laughs> things like that. I mean, yeah. literally, um, <laughs> you know, but, uh, you know, and they will often say like, oh yeah, you know, uh, uh, and then there was the guy who did the State Farm commercial uh, and, uh, I mean, actually a pretty well-known guy, very well-known guy. And, you know, he, he did a very substantial book of mine called Epistemology, uh, Randy Whitlow. And uh, he said, yeah, you know, I like to, so I do all the, he does all these commercial projects, big commercial projects. And he says, yeah, but every now and then I like to do something, uh, you know, that, that keeps my brain from rotting. Uh, so, you know, I'll do your thing. Um, right. So. The, um, you know, in discussions with, with colleagues, uh, narrators like to um, audition for books that they're interested in, that they'd like to learn from, that they'd like to read. So it's, you know, it's. Yeah, it is interesting. But I mean, the reason I'm kind of hard selling you to the public is it, it's not because I know you, which I don't. I don't really know you. I mean, yeah, I know you a little bit, but almost entirely through the projects we've done together. But the thing is that no, I think you do. Look, there are different kinds of narrators, there are different niches, but there is a certain niche that you really have down cold. I mean, just cold, which is the kind of murder she wrote niche. Um, and a lot of people uh, would really, a lot of people really want to hear precisely the kind of voice that you have. Uh, and I mean, precisely that. It's just a fact. Um, you know, you know, not everybody. I mean, not everybody's. It, it's not perfect for everything, right? Uh, but it's going to be. It would be just perfect for you know a pretty large class of things. And the other thing is that one reason that I like to work with you, that I like to use you, uh, to put it infelicitously, is that because the material, my material, is actually quite difficult. But your voice kind of puts people at rest, right? So they don't feel stupid and challenged and berated and judged when you read it, right? But if somebody else reads it, you know, they become defensive, right? Uh -huh. uh, and that's an enormously, just enormously powerful thing from a marketing standpoint, because, you know, the number one thing is you don't want to make people feel dumb and judged. Um, and your voice makes them not feel dumb and judged. <laughs> well, I understand what you're saying. Um, I hadn't really thought about it, but... And, and it might just be the veracity of it as I'm reading through it and narrating it and I'm learning it. And I, so it might just be honest, um, a little bit of confusion and then clarification and then the light bulb goes on. And uh, that's what I try to convey, uh, at least in the dialogues. Um, and, um, and it's true. That's what's happening as I'm reading your work. Well, here I don't want to. I don't want to. Uh, you know, I don't want to bore our, our our listeners too much. So I just want 
I will make one last point, which is a kind of practical point. Look, I understand that it seems a little gauche to, you know, kind of go directly to some author, right? And just say, hey, you know, I'm a narrator. Let me narrate your stuff. That does seem a little, you know, in, in, impolite or whatever, but impolitic. But look at it this way, right? If you land one of those deals, right? So if you go to Dean Koontz, I mean, not maybe he's not, you know, number one in your list, but just suppose you did. You go to Dean Koontz, right, and say, look, um, and he's, he actually, as it happens, uh, he, he's the kind of guy who actually would listen to you. Uh, you know, just say, hey, look, um, I, I, you know, I really liked, uh, you know, Mr. Murder. Uh, you know, I mean, he's written, this guy's written a lot of books, and I don't know that any of them are, I can look on Audible, but I'm sure a lot of them are, are not yet being narrated. And just say, look, I, uh, I want to narrate this book. That, that will, that's 35,000 bucks right there, right? Right there, see? Whereas if you do these little projects, right, you know, it's, you know, very little, right? See? I, I see what you're saying, and I always appreciate your encouraging right. me. I, I, I appreciate it. You make me feel confident, and... Uh, Just a thought. You encourage me. Yeah. And sure. um, Just a I thought. Know it's a good thought, and, I, and I'm sure it's been done, and there's... No reason that you can't reach out to someone. Absolutely, and and you don't have to reach out, but I mean, as a general principle, right? I mean, one right. big score is yeah. worth a lot. So let me just wrap it up for my listeners, and then you and I will have a brief talk after, uh, after the after. So hold the line, okay, Norma? I'm just going to wrap it up for my listeners here. Very okay. good. All right. So this is my um, this is my third interview with Norma Jean Gradsky, and uh, Norma Jean has narrated many of my books. And um, and uh, so what, what were they? Analytic truth versus formal truth, Kant's ethics, uh, a priori knowledge, non-empirical knowledge, and uh, recently philosophical knowledge. Uh, a very, very substantial book, and she did a hell of a job, and I just posted a uh, little podcast about that one. Oh, and uh, I did, yeah. That. Oh, yeah, that's right, yeah, you'll see. And uh, anyway, but um, now here's one more point, which is that um, I'm going to, Norma Jean has, uh, has uh, uh, been kind enough to make some of, some uh, samples of her work available to me, some of the uh, uh, more traditional work that she's done. Uh, so, you know, for me, the work has all been in the nature of logic and philosophy, but that's obviously not her primary bailiwick. Uh, she does it, you know, as well as it can be done, but her primary bailiwick is, you know, works of a more literary nature, uh, which she, and she really, really nails them, and she's really, really good with the characters. Um, and, you know, the intonation is all just right, and uh, the production quality is really good, uh, but again, they're really well acted. And, um, and uh, so, you know, I'm going to uh, make a little bit of make a small promotional podcast in which I, I uh, showcase some of uh, these samples from Norma Jean's extensive repertoire. And um, if you want to get in touch with Norma Jean, now should I go ahead and give them the email we talked about, or should we hold yes. on that? Yeah. Yes. So, what, what is that email again? It's n. I'm n gradsky at gmail dot com. Okay, so that's n gradsky. So that's n. G R A D S K Y at gmail.com. Okay, so if you have projects for Norma Jean, uh, you know, uh, you can go ahead and email her. Um, and uh, I, I think it'll very much be worth it. Okay.